the new information pouring in about the movie theater shooting in Lafayette overnight. These new pictures of a candlelight vigil on a warm summer evening in Louisiana. Neighbors coming together to honor the victims. Over the past 36 hours, we've been seeing dozens of people coming to that theater to lay bouquets of flowers. Lafayette joining the growing list of American communities scarred by gun violence. Also this morning, we're learning much more about that shooter and his troubled and very confusing past. We're also hearing the extraordinary stories of heroism from inside that theater. In just a moment, we're going to talk to a woman who was right there in the back row when the shooting started. She crawled her way to safety. But we begin here with ABC's Tom Yamas, who is in Lafayette and has been putting together a minute by minute account of the chaos, the carnage, as well as the bravery. Tom, good morning to you. Paula, good morning. People who have been inside the theater where this happened just behind me describe an eerie scene, an empty movie house with abandoned shoes, purses, popcorn, and bullet holes. Police say the shooter fired 10 rounds in less than a minute as people scrambled out of the theater. Overnight, a closer look and more details of the chilling moments this multiplex in Lafayette, Louisiana became the scene of a mass shooting. Friends of those who died now realizing what's lost. It's tough. Thursday, 25 people seated for a screening of Trainwreck, including Jonah Slassen and his friend, whose seat choice they say made all the difference. It could have been much different if we were in the back row when the shots were fired. Because in that same multiplex was John Russell Hauser, sitting alone, entering the theater like everyone else. Until 20 minutes into the movie, the 59-year-old fires a 40 caliber handgun at the woman in front of him, causing confusion and chaos. We thought it was the movie, but then once we realized th this is real, like this guy is shooting everyone in the theater, and he was so close to us. Hauser firing at least 13 rounds, killing two and injuring nine others. Everyone was just running down the stairs, freaking out, climbing over chairs and people. But moviegoers jumping into action, helping one another escape safely, even forming a makeshift triage outside the theater. And there were more heroes stepping up. Two teachers, Gina Moe and Ali Martin, seated in that same theater. Gina using her body as a shield to protect her friend and co-worker, Ali, taking a bullet for her, freeing Ali, who was shot, to pull the fire alarm. Overnight, both women now released from the hospital. That's how we react to situations. We're uh, very protective individuals, and uh, I'm very proud of them. Now, a community in mourning, a memorial growing outside the store victim Jillian Johnson owned. The 33-year-old, an entrepreneur and a musician. Johnson's family celebrating her life, posting this photo on Instagram. And Macy Bro, the 21-year-old student, remembered in a prayer service on Friday. Governor Bobby Jindal laying flowers at the site and touring the grisly crime scene, remembering the two lives lost and those injured in the shooting. We will get through this. It's going to be tough, but this is a resilient community. Governor Jindal describes the shooter as barbaric and methodical and says if it wasn't for those heroes, more people would have died. Jindal, who's running for the Republican nomination for president, has temporarily suspended his campaign and says right now is not the time to talk about gun control. Dan? Tom, thank you. As we said, there's new information pouring in about the gunman, John Hauser, and the portrait is troubling including allegations of mental illness, erratic behavior, anti-government sentiment, and even a Nazi flag. How did it all lead to him getting a gun, standing up in a theater, and then opening fire in the middle of a comedy? ABC's Ryan Owens is also in Lafayette. Ryan, good morning to you. Dan, good morning to you. There were plenty of warning signs, including the fact his own family had him committed to a mental institution. In recent years, he was estranged from that family and essentially dropped out of society. Still, for investigators this morning, none of it adds up to a motive for murder. He's the face behind America's latest mass shooting, a 59-year-old drifter with a violent past. So the question this morning, how did he get that gun he used to kill two and injure so many more. The weapon was purchased at a pawn shop in Phoenix, Alabama in February of 2014. Purchased legally, police say, even though. In 06, uh, Mr. Hauser applied for a concealed carry permit. That permit was denied. 
Before his name made national headlines, John Rusty Hauser earned a law degree from Faulkner University in Alabama. He was politically active, even running for office as an ultra-conservative in Georgia. Expressing controversial views in online forums. According to Storyful, one post reading, America is so sick that I now believe it will be the enemy of the world. In 2001, Hauser placed a swastika on the outside of the bar he owned but denied he was a Nazi sympathizer. The drifter spent the last few weeks living at this Motel 6 in Lafayette. What detectives discovered in his room only deepens the mystery. We found uh, wigs and glasses and disguises basically in his room. But there's no disguising Hauser's troubled past. His last known address was here in Alabama, where he was evicted last year, after the owners say he booby-trapped the fireplace by tampering with the gas line and trashing their house. I know what he did to the house. I didn't want him to hurt us. His marriage fell apart too. In 2008, his wife and family asked for a protective order, saying Hauser exhibited extreme erratic behavior, including various acts of family violence. The court filing says he had manic depression and or bipolar disorder. His wife so worried, she removed all guns from their home. Hauser's brother speaking exclusively to our Atlanta affiliate, WSB. We're just trying to get our arms around this whole situation right now. While investigators search for a motive, the people of Lafayette have a more basic question. Why was the gunman here? Why were they targeted? This morning, investigators cannot find any clear connection between the killer and this community. Paula? Those new details continuing to emerge. Ryan, we want to thank you for that reporting.